Hello and welcome to a guide on writing essays. My name is Michaela McGregor and I post college content, lifestyle content, that sort of thing. If you are new here, welcome and uh, welcome back if you have watched my channel before. Before we begin, just um, don't forget if this video is slightly helpful to like it or to subscribe, anything like that. Um, I'm very grateful. Also, um, just a disclaimer that this is how I kind of go about writing my essays and this may not be the process for everyone, but you know, I've, I've tried different tactics of writing essays and I feel like this formula is what helps me the most. I've broken this up into four different categories. We have research, outlining, writing itself, and then the editing process. So I am just going to kind of go through it like the chronological process of writing an essay, beginning with the research. No matter the style of essay or the content of the essay, I've always found that actually the most important part of essay writing is the research because you can be a phenomenal writer and write a terrible essay if you don't have the good research. But on the contrary, if you're kind of struggling with the writing, you're not feeling as good with it, but if you have a really solid amount of research to kind of draw from and to reference, I think that can make all the difference. So so the first thing that I always do is I start at my library website. This sounds like a corny campaign to get people to use your college library website or your uh, school library website, but it really is so helpful. Just do a keyword search and take note of all the books that might be helpful for you to reference. The number one thing I would say though is do not go and order these books online. Go to the library and pick them up yourself. The reason for this, this is so important, is because keyword searches don't often pull up every single book. Like, you know, sometimes they're just maybe not labeled as well on the online catalog. If you go go physically to the library and you go to the section where your books are, like the ones that you found online, you go to that section. You can find in that same area a ton of books that are all sorted by that same exact theme. For online sources, I use pretty strictly just Google Scholar. I do prefer to use the sources that are published, you know, they're corroborated sources. I just find that it puts me in a lot less trouble figuring out is this even a legitimate paper or not. I don't remember the last time that I just consulted a random Google search to write an essay. Um, usually Google Scholar has everything I need and it's just a lot more verifiable, a lot more trustworthy to use. If you find online books as PDFs to use, which I often do if I can't find them at my library, do a command F search. So like a keyword search in that document online. And that way, if you're for example, writing about the Great Depression, just do Command F, Depression, and you've got all the parts in the book that reference that specific time period. It's a really useful way to just find snippets that you need. For the physical books, um, to find the things that you need, I often use the index in the back, and I, I literally just read through from A to Z to see if there's any keywords that might be helpful for me. Consult your professor in office hours during your research stage. I always, always do this. I go in, I pretty much give them what my general idea is for my essay, and I say something along the lines of, hey, is this a feasible idea to write about? Um, is there kind of a way I could improve upon this? And almost all the time they have a really good idea of a way that I should either approach the question or something that's relevant to my research that could be useful to look into. Once you kind of have all these sources in the tracks that you want to take, then you can actually consult your sources and begin to look at your research. For note taking, I don't actually take notes on my sources that I consult, I just type up all of the relevant quotes. Um, so I flip open the book, pinned underneath my laptop, and type up everything. And the last important step of this first stage of research, definitely do your citations right now. As you go through your books, as you type up your quotations. It's a lot easier in the end when you've got all these citations already done and prepared. It's easier when you're tracking down your sources to know what came from what when you've just got it organized. As you go, as you consult each source, do the full citation. So moving on to outlining, I will say it's pretty rare in the classes that I've taken at least to do an essay that's solely research. There's almost always an argument to facet the essay. So even when I'm taking like a science class or something and it's never just describe dark matter or write about the discovery of Jupiter. Like it's never just that. It's you've got to come up with your own argument. So you need to be thinking about this while making your outline. It doesn't have to be thought of right now, but I think it's just a really good time to think about it. Just think of a subjective question, something that can't be pulled up in like, you know, when you Google a question and there's like a featured snippet at the top that gives you the answer. If you Google your question and it just has an automatic answer, it probably isn't deep enough of a question. Um, make a general plan for how many pages or words you need to write a day in order to reach the deadline. And keep in mind that you'll also need some time um, between finishing your final draft and turning it in so that you can revise. I would say begin outlining as soon as you're done the research while the research is fresh in your mind. This makes it easiest to kind of organize all your thoughts because you've got everything at the front of your mind so it's you can mentally map it out I think a little bit easier. I, what I do is I formulate general paragraph ideas. So if I've got kind of 
four points I want to make. I just separate it out into different paragraphs. I mean, this is kind of building upon that structure we learned back in middle school, like the skeleton paper, where it's like introduction, three paragraphs of evidence, and then conclusion. You know, it's just all really just an expansion of that. Um, and then, of course, try as best you can as to make sure that these follow kind of a coherent pattern so that one paragraph transitions into the next, not nonsensically, but with some sort of underlying thread in mind. Okay, this next step's a bit more unique, but it's what I found is most helpful. Let's say you have a seven paragraph essay you've estimated. That's all the things you want to talk about. Seven bits of evidence, not including the introduction and conclusion. Then look at all of the quotes that you typed up during your research stage of the process and figure out which paragraph each quote would correspond to. It's okay, it doesn't have to be definite, but I just color code it so I highlight each of my paragraphs and then I go through and I highlight each quote. Everything that's highlighted in pink belongs to the same paragraph. Save one epiphany for your conclusion. I get caught up with what my thoughts are during the process of outlining and sometimes I'll be like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. I'm gonna put it in this paragraph, this paragraph, this paragraph. Save one of those revelations for the very end because it's really annoying when you've reached the end of the writing process and you're just staring at a conclusion because you don't know what to put in it. It really helps to expedite the process if you've prepared some sort of um, epiphany to weave into the very conclusion. So as you're doing your outlining process, make note of something that would be good for your conclusion. And then don't forget to keep it flexible, of course. While you're writing, your argument is going to take shape. It's very unlikely that it'll remain static over the course of your essay, so um, don't be afraid to follow kind of as it molds and makes contours over the course of your writing. Okay, the writing process itself. What I do first is I always sit down, I look at my first paragraph, and let's say it's all of the quotes that are highlighted in red. I look through and read all of my red highlighted quotes, and then I figure out how can I fit these into a paragraph. Make sure that you're doing all of this without any distractions, and I actually made a study video recently with long hours, so check that out if you kind of want to look at that and see how you can actually sit down and really focus on an essay. One of the things I would say is also just have a thesaurus with you because not only will this help prevent writer's block, but it'll help you not repeat the same phrases or words, which is something like I'm just a huge stickler about. Like I hate using the same word multiple times in my essay. Is. So I always have a thesaurus with me, um, an online thesaurus. If you want to write an efficient paper, one of the most important things you can do is learn how to type quickly. I know a lot of people don't do the proper format, like a lot of people use their index fingers to type. And I would really recommend investing the time to properly learn how to type with your fingers in the proper positions. Um, you can just skip this if you already do type like that, but it's going to save you so much time. I mean, over the course of your life, if you are typing in the proper way, you're going to save yourself hours. I learned via dance mat typing in like computer lab back in third grade or something, and I remember having a lot of fun with it. It's probably juvenile, so I don't know if I should be recommending that. I haven't looked at it in how many years ago? It was third grade. Much over a decade ago. The point is, I'm going on about this way too long. Type quickly. <laughs> Skip around between paragraphs. Do not feel obligated to go from one to the next. Go where the essay takes you. Don't worry if it's bad. This is actually advice that I've gotten in creative writing. It doesn't matter if the writing is bad, the important thing is that you're getting the words down on the paper. You're going to fix it all in the editing process. This is just a draft. Any writing is better than no writing. Leave comments for yourself as you go. Oftentimes I think while I'm writing, something will be kind of intuitive, that I'll remember to do it, that I'll come back and be like, oh yes, this is what I wanted to put. But actually, once you've started doing a lot of writing, it's really hard to keep track of all your different ideas that are kind of interwoven together. So I'd really recommend leaving comments for yourself on your writing and you can go back and resolve them and you'll just you don't have to kind of keep those on mental notes they'll just be there waiting for you when you go back and revise just some general writing advice shake up your sentence structure make sure that you're not writing kind of the same format you know starting each sentence with the word the make sure you're shifting the way that you use clauses and phrases and everything um semicolons and hyphens short sentences long sentences that's just going to make your writing look extremely professional if you have a good flow and structure like that um and prod at the unknown i found that this is one of the best ways to elevate an essay is to to really dive into the things you don't know. It doesn't even have to be explicit, just kind of even nodding at different paths that you could take to further deepen this essay topic. I, I don't know, I feel like that's always a good way to make your essay better. <laughs> As for your quotes, you're going to have a lot of them once you've gone through all your sources. Don't put them all into the essay. I end up deleting half and I end up probably paraphrasing a quarter of them and maybe only a quarter actually make it into the essay as actual quotes. And obviously like still cite your paraphrased quotes. But being able to put it into your own words not only helps to make more of the essay in your own words, but it just kind of shows that you understand the sources and you're putting your own authorial opinion on them. With your opinion in mind, question your sources, doubt them. Say, this author seems to neglect the fact that A, B, and C happened, so this, you know, their article has 
blah 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 I, I don't even know but definitely question your sources and then constantly be thinking about your original question it's so easy to get off topic and to write too much and so just kind of always return to that and have that in mind as you go about writing essays are intimidating you know a lot of them are going to be more than 10 pages and the best thing that you can do for yourself while writing is to consider each paragraph as just its own little mini discussion post that you're posting online for a mini assignment for class and the reason for this is that it's a lot more digestible if you're not thinking about the paragraph you're writing as one sixteenth of this massive project but just instead one mini project um, that you're doing bit by bit and the editing process this is my favorite of the four stages of essay writing because I think it is by far the most simple this sounds like cliched advice but honestly read it out loud you will catch typos that you wouldn't catch otherwise give yourself a day I think before the deadline just to edit and revise I mean obviously this isn't possible all of the time but if you can give yourself a full day and even a day in between writing and revising to just forget about it and that way you can lay fresh eyes on it afterwards um during your editing process that's when you also want to double check everything that the professor has told you in regards to logistics so formatting citations deadlines all of that the method that you should be turning in the essay make sure that you do not lose points on formalities and then lastly when you've finally finished the essay don't forget to refresh the page you know your canvas page your blackboard whatever and make sure that it actually submitted and I guess unofficial last advice once you're done close out all your tabs and just take a breather it is a very difficult process but I do think it's also a rewarding one I hope that this is really useful for anyone who's writing an essay for college for high school again this is just my process that I use but I found that it works for me so maybe it will for you as well but thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week